This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, this is part two of finding trig functions at multiples of 45 degrees, or remember, that's the same thing as multiples of pi over four, because that's what 45 degrees is. So we're just gonna do a couple more problems. So let's find the exact value of the, let's do all the functions. For five pi over four. Now, this is a multiple of 45, because it's a multiple of pi over four, and the main thing where I remember is this Special triangle, it's one of our special triangles, 45, 45, 90, where this is 45 degrees, right? If you have the two legs of this triangle, when this is side, a square, it's a two. And you can verify that with the Pythagorean there. And that's a, the main thing I remember. All right, so where's 5 pi over 4? Well, it's down here in quadrant um, 3. Right? Now if you need to change that to degrees to figure out, figure that out, that's fine. But I think from here to here, right, is pi and then an extra pi over 4 is right here. So that's 5 pi over 4. All right, and then you can pick a point on here and write the order pair. Or in the last video, in part 1, I showed you the way I actually think of it. I think, well, to get to that point, on the x direction I'm going negative 1. In the y direction I'm also going negative 1 and the hypotenuse or this radius is square root of 2. Now remember, that's, that's not the length of that side because you can't have a negative 1 length. But if you were to write that ordered pair, in other words, it would be negative 1, negative 1. And that's the main thing is when you're getting trig functions, you need to know the x and y value, whether I'm looking at this little picture at my x value thinking it is negative 1 or I'm thinking of it as the ordered pair, the x value is negative 1. So let's go ahead and figure out all the trig functions. So we'll do the sine of 5 pi over 4. And what will that be? So I'm going to try to write smaller. All right, so what's the sine? It's going to be the y value, whether you look in the order pair negative 1 or you look right here on my little triangle I've drawn, negative 1, over the um, R value, which is square root of 2. So if you want to write out those values first, if that's easier for you, you could write X is negative 1, Y is negative 1, R is square root of 2. So it's going to be negative 1 over square root of 2, or negative square root of 2 over 2. That means the cosecant is the reciprocal. Now it's easier for the reciprocal for you to look at it before I rationalize the denominator. So it's got, the answer is still going to be negative, right? Reciprocals have the same sign. It'll be square root of 2 over 1. So it's negative square root of 2 because square root of 2 over 1 is the same as square root of 2. How about the cosine? Well, you know what? The x value is exactly the same as the y value, so everything's going to look exactly the same. The cosine is going to be the same thing when I simplify it. And the secant is the reciprocal is going to be the same thing. So I'm actually not writing negative 1 over square root of 2 again. I'm just writing the simplified thing, right? Because you would have, again, the x value over the r value, which is negative 1 over square root of 2. And the last thing is the tangent. So what's the tangent? Well, the tangent is y over x. So I could look at my picture and I think could think of it as negative 1 over negative 1, or I could look at my values I wrote over here, negative 1 over negative 1, or I could look at my ordered pair, y over x, negative 1 over negative 1. In any case, we get 1, so the cotangent is the reciprocal of 1, which is still 1, and so there we're done. And that's how we always figure out the trig functions of any 
um, angle that's in multiples of 45 or pi over 4. You have to remember you're going to have the, for the x and y values, it'll either be 1 or negative 1. Okay, that's the easiest ones to choose. And then that means the hypotenuse or, I don't really want to call it the hypotenuse, that's the radius here, you know, this distance r um, is the square root of 2. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.